Welcome back to Morning Break. March is a month of many themes, one being National Nutrition Month, which stresses the importance of a balanced diet and exercise. Here to tell us more about how we can have the right foods in our diet and tips for how to stay healthy is South Coast Health Dietitian Rebecca Lawrence. Good morning, Rebecca. Hi, thank you for having yeah, me again. Thanks for being here. So uh, Nutrition Month is important because nutrition, having good nutrition is just so important for your raw health. Right. It's very productive against a lot of diseases. So during the month of March, dietitians and other health professionals really encourage people to focus on the, how nutrition impacts their health. And this year's theme is actually celebrate a world of flavors, which is to help us encourage people to embrace different food cultures, flavors, which could be adding in new recipes, new foods you may have never tried before, or anything else that um, seems different and new, which is beneficial because a lot of people eat the same things, you know, right. over and over and over again, yep. right? A lot of it's based on region, of course, and what's available, but, you know, international foods are now becoming more plentiful. Um, most aisles in the grocery store have a whole aisle for yeah, international yeah. foods, and they're becoming a little bit more budget-friendly as well. So, including new foods like fruits, vegetables, grains, proteins, and things like that in a nice balanced diet can keep you very healthy. And if you try some new recipes or things like that that add in more variety, you're getting a lot more vitamins and minerals that you could have been lacking before or just weren't quite getting enough of. It's like taking your uh, taste yeah, buds on a little mini all, vacation, right? Yeah, all about variety. <laughs> so what are the most important things you need to do when looking for balanced nutrition, when you're at the grocery store and deciding what you know your meals are going to be for right. the week? Yeah, so typically... You want to make sure you're getting lots of vegetables. You know, that should be a lot of your base because that's where a lot of our low calorie but high nutrition value is. Mm -hmm. And of course, lean proteins like chicken, fish, leaner cuts of beef or pork, and then healthy fats like olive oil or um, avocados or nuts. And then, you know, balance it out with some fruits as a nice sweet treat on the side. Um, but, you know, like I said, including more cultural types of foods can bring a little bit more yeah. variety in some things you may never eaten before. Yeah. And, and for those who maybe aren't super adventurous, adventurous eaters, what are some ways to kind of gradually work your way up to having a more balanced, nutritious diet and trying some, you know, different things? Well, you could add in some new herbs or spices. Uh, for example, I got some I think, kefir lime leaves to add into some things. It's um, kind of like you would use it as a bay leaf and you just right, add that yeah. into some soups. Um, there's lots of spice blends. Maybe you introduce a new uh, fruit or vegetable into a meal that you already make and that could be fun. Um, for example, this week we have um, three key challenges, I guess you would call it, for week four of National Nutrition Month. Uh, the first challenge is actually trying a new food preparation or cooking skill. Okay. The third challenge is actually eating with friends and family, which we know to be very important. Yeah. And then the third theme is actually going to be incorporating a new uh, cooking technique or a recipe from a different country, wow. which is what we'll be doing in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all of those things, um, you know, it seems simple, but definitely easier said yes. than done. But those are all just great ways to kind of get started. Mm -hmm. And you're going to stick around and join us in a little bit. Yes. Yes, we'll be making a dish called gazpacho, which is a Spanish slash Portuguese dish. Great. Thank you so much, Rebecca. We'll mm -hmm. check back in with you in just a few minutes. Welcome back to Morning Break. Earlier, we talked to you about March being Nutrition Month and how you can add certain foods to your diet to better your nutrition. Now, South Coast dietitian Rebecca Lawrence is back with us in the kitchen to show us a healthy dish you can make at home. So, Rebecca, what are we making today? We're making a dish called gazpacho, which is a Spanish and Portuguese cold soup. So they use this during the summer because it's very hot there, much yeah. like it is here Definitely in Savannah. Like it is here, yeah. <laughs> so and it doesn't take any sort of heating equipment, and it's very, very quick. So we use a lot of fresh ingredients. Uh, the basic ingredients are tomatoes, okay. cucumbers, bell peppers, onion, garlic, and then we have olive oil, uh, white wine vinegar, and then seasonings. Lots of bright vegetables, yes. which means lots of nutrients and right. things that are good for you. Yeah, it's very low calorie, so you can use it as a tapas, an appetizer, oh, nice. or you can flush it out a little bit more as a meal by adding some other ingredients. Great. But the basic is going to be getting your tomatoes. Okay. You're going to want to seed them, which is just going to involve cutting it in half, and you can just take out these seeds, 
And just scoop them into. Yeah. You definitely <laughs> don't want seeds in your gazpacho. I don't you think don't. that would be very enjoyable. Yeah. And to make this even easier, if you don't, can't get fresh tomatoes, you could use canned. Like uh, chopped or crushed peeled, or something? Yeah, okay. something like Great. whole plum tomatoes. Yeah, that's even easier. Yeah. But is there a difference? I mean, are, are fresh tomatoes, is there more nutrients in those compared to ones from a can? Because, you, you know, them, yeah. sometimes it's. It's just more convenient yeah. sometimes. For convenience people. for sure, but there is a little bit of vitamin C loss oftentimes when okay. you're heating uh, fruits and vegetables, but okay. there's still plenty of nutrition. Good. That's good to know. So you're just going to take all these tomatoes. It's going to be about two pounds of tomatoes. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> you're going to put them in first. Okay. The tomatoes are the, your most wet ingredient, mm -hmm. so typically you want to put that where the blades are. Most people's blenders just have blades at the bottom, so it's much more convenient to get it started. Very nice. Mm -hmm. You're going to take bell peppers, about one whole bell pepper. I used red bell pepper. The recipe tends to call for green, but I like okay. the taste of red a little bit could better. Could you do both? I like both. You could do both. Very if you nice. want to throw some extra in there, it yeah. will change the color a little okay. bit. Okay. So, I'm going to hold one of those. Of course, you want to seed it. Just chop it up lightly. You take a cucumber. You can peel it, and typically you want to seed it, which you can do by Just cutting like in that. half. Oh, okay. And then taking a spoon and, you know, very quickly doing that. Right. Getting all that off yeah. there. So is there nutrients in the skin of cucumbers that you're losing by doing that? A little bit of fiber. But, fiber, okay. You know, it's pretty healthy vitamins and minerals in there anyway. <laughs> Good. Plus it's a nice fresh ingredient. Um, so to do that, just peel that. You just cut the ends off. Okay. <laughs> Cut it in half very quickly. And, of course, if you use an English cucumber, this is just your typical garden yeah, variety. Yeah, You yeah, actually don't have to do this store. step. Oh, you can skip that. Okay. Yeah. So you just scoop it right out of there. Very and easy. And you can just either break it up or chop it up. Okay. But I already have some here already done. Oh, you just chopped it perfect. <laughs> okay. Loosely, since we're going to be blending it, it doesn't have to be chopped perfectly. Right. Yeah. Then onion. I The recipe calls for about half of a red onion. Okay. I don't love onion you know, that's okay. not cooked anyway so i actually only did a fourth okay i'm not going to cut that on tv because i'm afraid i would cry yeah <laughs> i don't want any tears yeah then we have garlic it's about two to three cloves of garlic okay i'm just going to plop that in there as well so we have all our vegetables kind of done ready to go and then we're going to take about three tablespoons of olive oil very nice and then about two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. You could also use red wine vinegar, whatever you have at home in okay. the pantry. And then salt and pepper. And then I put a little cayenne pepper in mine. Give it some kick. <laughs> I love it. Good. So we're going to take all that, hands up, over to our blender here. Let you come over here. Could you do this in a food processor? Yes. So okay. You could use a food processor. You could also use an immersion blender, which is just a little handheld blender. Yeah. That's what I use for hot soup, so I don't have to put it yes, over. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to blend it for about a minute. So you can let this go longer okay. and get a little bit less texture. You mm -hmm. could also have uh, used peeled tomatoes to have it a little bit more smooth. You could also strain it out, but you'll probably want to add a little bit of water to it oh, as well. Oh, okay. So your finished product. You usually want it to sit in the fridge for about three to four hours. Oh, so this chill. is something you need to make ahead. <laughs> yes, okay. yes. You can make it ahead. You can also have it in a few days in advance as well. Good. How or long does it keep for usually in the fridge? About three days. Three days? Okay. I've had some people say you could freeze them as well, but it is a oh, lot of watery yeah, items, so it's going to be a little bit of texture yeah. difference. So you're just going to portion yeah, it out. Nice. You can put, like I said, some other toppings in there to make it a little bit more complete meal. And you want to serve this cold, yes, correct? Yes, cold, because yeah. it's very, very refreshing. Very nice. So, And we're going to have this on our website. And, mm -hmm. you know, where can people, if they, they want to kind of start the process of their nutrition journey, how can they see you or someone else with South Coast? Well, the South Coast with me, you have to have a referral from your doctor. Okay. Um, you can get a referral, get an appointment, come see me. We'll kind of usually go over the basics okay. of healthy eating, and then we kind of tailor it to your specific needs. So if you have diabetes or heart disease right. or something along those lines, we'll have some differences in a normal person's diet. But getting started, you know, it's always good to see your doctor and see what you need. Yeah, see what's mm -hmm. going on. That's the first step. Well, this looks delicious. Thank yes. you so much, Rebecca, <laughs> for joining us for Nutrition Month. We appreciate right. it. Thank you.